This episode of the Course Grind Podcast has been brought to you by Central Sports and Graphics Incorporated, family-owned and operated screen printing and embroidery business located in a historic storefront on Old Berwick Road in the heart of SB. They've been doing screen printing for over 20 years. They have high-quality product at a low price. Be sure to check them out. Central Sports and Graphics Incorporated, 570-784-1212. Now, on to the show. This is Patrick Plywood McNeil, and you're listening to the Coarse Grind Podcast with Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is episode number 140 of the Course Grind Podcast with you as always this evening. Host creator Sean Rossler, how is everyone doing this evening? 90 episodes beyond my 50th. It's a plus 40 to my 100. This one is a weird one to sit back and enjoy. And yet, enjoy I must, enjoy I will, enjoy I shall. Lots of other stuff to be concerned with. And yet, here's my youngest son with a newfound attachment to air hockey, my middle not being the one with the worst road rash post-bike ride, and our oldest, well, he's still here, so there's that for him. What better night then to learn more about not just food, but appreciating a different, potentially more stress-relieving aspect to it all. Tonight's guest hails from Michigan's Upper Peninsula, which is an amazing array of what natural beauty was meant to be like. The highways are perfectly nestled in the woods, providing the best scenic you could ask for. Words cannot express the true nature of the UP. It truly is a land of goldenrod rivers and fresh experiences. The atmosphere up in northern Michigan brings forward a mental image of a simpler time. A time where everything was done via the sweat of your brow or the strength of a hammer swing. It really makes a person appreciate the sacrifices made to move us forward as a culture that you can always tell an out-of-towner from a native by their gait. The way a person walks says a lot, and the people of northern Michigan walk amongst the mighty pines and wildlife with feet firmly planted like that of mighty oak. So now imagine a cannabis-infused lightning rod showing you all the way to Nirvana. Well, the outs are endless. I've done enough yapping about this guy and the work that he's doing and potentially doing, so let's uh, go beyond that and get right to bringing him out, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, the dopeness behind Deliciously Dope TV on YouTube, Chef Rodney Lionheart. Chef, what's going on, buddy? How's it going, bud? That's probably probably the coolest I'm ever going to sound in my life, so thank you for that. I don't know if that's absolutely (laughs) true, but... uh, you know, my, my goal here is to certainly lift up the folks who are sitting in the chair. So thanks so much for uh, taking some time to be here with us this evening. Uh, folks new to the program, folks with terrible short-term memories like yours truly, uh, starters, mains, and after starters. We're going to talk about where the chef guest in question came from, what brought them to us here today. Mains, we're going to talk about where they're at, what they're doing. And finally, after is a little bit more irreverent, a little bit more off the cuff. But no one's been injured in 139 episodes, so I don't see it happening tonight. So without further ado, Chef Leinhardt, talk to me about where and what you grew up eating. Oh man, that's uh, that's that's a that's a hard one to answer. See, I uh, I grew up in the South, you know, and and my mom owned a restaurant, so it really depended on the special. You know, I had to really learn what food tasted like. Um, but my most, I would have to say my most fond memory, um, I would have to say fried chicken. Definitely. My mom, she was known for her fried chicken and her chicken and dumplings, you know, very Southern recipes, very stick to your ribs types of foods. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a huge seller. It was it was huge on, on on all of her menus, and so definitely grew up, you know, eating the the, the fried chicken, you know, and the chicken and, and noodles. Um, I mean, it, it's really it's it's crazy because it's like some of the stuff that we used to eat in the South, like chitlins, for mm-hmm. example. So yeah, help 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 those out there who are of the Northern predilection. What are chitlins? Okay. So chitlins are basically pig intestines. That's exactly what they are. Um, you know, you get them raw, 
with all the shit and all the nastiness inside of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And you clean them. You clean them thoroughly and you clean them good. And they do not smell good at all. Um, Mm -hmm. I've I've seen people, you know, lose their said lunch, you know, and and it it was it was not a pretty sight. But once you once you get them all cleaned up, you know, cooking them's easy. You batter them and fry them. You know, there's a bunch of different ways you can cook them, and uh, they taste great. Just don't tell people what they are. Just don't (laughs) don't even begin to think about where they came from. Just don't do it. I mean, that's a lot of heritage there. Don't get me wrong, and you can taste it, and it's great, but it's the before story that you just don't want to read. Absolutely. You know? yeah, absolutely. It so, is. I mean, Chitlins, Chitlins were in and amidst the armory when you were a kid. But talk to me. Were you a picky eater, adventurous eater, all-inclusive eater? What kind of an eater were you growing up? I was the skinniest one of my immediate family. So whatever I could get into me, I got into me. You know, yes. you learned uh, you learned to eat meat quick. If you didn't make it to the food chow line, if you will, or you didn't, you know – snack during your shifts or whatever at the restaurant um you really didn't eat so i mean but i didn't like and it's interesting because i did not like mushrooms as a kid didn't Mm. like them Mm. um it just it 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 was a texture thing and then just one day my friend ordered a pizza uh with mushrooms on it and i said fuck it ate it and i was like these are amazing and then you know we moved back up to Michigan, and morales were always a thing. You know, mm-hmm. I would pick them. I just wouldn't eat them. And now I love them. I can't get, I can't get enough of them. Nice, man. Um, <laughs> you know, step away from the mushrooms for a second. Um, mm-hmm. Foods you miss a little more than most from your childhood? Are, are there childhood foods that, you know, maybe you don't necessarily readily replicate, or you just you just kind of hold in a reverent sense? So it, it's something, it's stupid simple. It's, uh, I like a really good uh, banana pudding. Oh, nice, man. So, yeah, yeah. Speaking so, of Southern. Yeah, yeah. You got to do it the right way, you know. And uh, my grandmother, she would buy, you know, the, the old school Jello mix for 15 cents a box just to have that. And then she would mash up like three times that amount in bananas and put it in there. Mm-hmm. Just as like mm-hmm. a, a you know a texture type of thing, a flavor type of thing, and then she would just layer the top of that with whipped cream. Stupid simple, you know. She would do marshmallows and Christmas she and Thanksgiving, or uh, vanilla wafers, and it was just something about the way that she made it. I think maybe just because she made it, um, that yeah. it just it always brings back you know decently fond memories. Yeah, totally. Uh, so you know, obviously, she held an influence in your culinary upbringing. Was she the lightning rod? that made you want to be in the mix or was there somebody who was more of the influence for you? So I got thrown into a saute pan very quick. Uh, It wasn't, it wasn't anything of like, I didn't really, I was, I was given to think I had a choice in it, but I fucking didn't. Let's not lie. (laughs) I didn't. So my mom owned a restaurant. Um, She sat my brother and I down. I can still remember, you know, the the types of, I can tell you everything that happened. You know, obviously I was there, but I can, every little detail. And she goes, listen, I've got a babysitter lined up that will watch you, watch you guys, you know, after you get out of school and stuff. And then on the weekends, or you can work here in the restaurant and I'll just pay you what I was going to pay her. Well, you know, me being seven, eight years old, I convinced my brother, I was like, Hey, let's just do this. And yeah. we don't have to, you know, we don't, we don't need a babysitter. Had I known that would turn into a, like a lifetime of servitude. I don't <laughs> know if I would have happily made that decision that quick. Right on. But I, you know, definitely my mom, but my grandmother, I mean, you could totally tell that my, my grandmother taught my mom, you know, and you could see how, you know, tasting their food would be similar. And, uh, my granny, as we called her, did not like it when you said that my mom's fried chicken tastes better. It's like a thing <laughs> that, that would, that would start a war right there. That's no good. You don't want that, right? <laughs> so, you know, you have this upbringing, you have this inspiration by way of, you know, kind of being offered a situation, there has to be a moment where you can look back to and go, that was the turning point where food became my life, not just the thing I needed to do. Where where was that for you? I was probably, 
I want to say 10, 10, maybe 11 years old. This is a couple of years after working, you know, um, I was, I started as a bus boy from bus boy to dish tank, you know, dish tank to uh, prep cook and you get the idea. Well, when you're a prep cook, that's when you're really like part of the crew. I mean, most good restaurants, the dishwasher is where the shit's at. All right, when I walk in <clears throat> to a new gig or, or I walk in to interview some people or I walk in to check it out. I always talk to the dishwasher because they yep. honestly can get you the best fucking yep. weed. And yep. I always love good weed. All right. <laughs> um, secondly, they fucking know what's up. You can always tell, you know, what kind of heartbeat you're going to have in the kitchen if you always look at the dishwasher. And so as a dishwasher, you're part of the family, yes, but you're kind of like, yo, real talk, though. I will totally sell them out for 20 bucks, you know, or some shit. Like, you're, you're making your, your name, you know. And point is... Once I got to, to where I was the prep cook and I was prepping all of the specials and learning how to cook and my, I, the first time I seen my name on my mom's like, um, I would say like, no, I wouldn't say time clock, but like on the, on the hour sheet, yeah. you know, it was all handwritten back then. Um, my mom did not believe in printers. Um, she still didn't in her, in her, in her later ages, but, um, <laughs> yeah, the first time I see my name on the schedule. Like under my uncle's name, under, you know, um, a couple other people there in the family. Once I saw that, I was like, oh, so now you assholes have to pay attention to me and you have to teach me. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that really made me, made me glad. Nice. Man. I, you know, it was, it was hell getting there. But then yeah. once you make it to that level, you're like, it's not so yeah. bad. And then you're like, oh my God, there's a bunch more of, you know, in front of me. Like I've got so much more to do. Yeah, How man. can I push it? And you just keep pushing. Yeah. So like, not only have you gotten there, you've, you've gone beyond getting there and you are la like wrapped up in this deliciously dope action <laughs> with our mutual, uh, Beth Aretsky. Yep. yep. Um, talk to me about where that's at. What, what is deliciously dope? What does it do? What does it feel like? Um, okay, so Deliciously Dope is going to smack you in the face and let you know what the fuck is up with weed and food, basically. <laughs> it's, it's really what's going to happen. So um, I really looked at, you know, so COVID hit. Let's start where it actually started. Let's start at the fucking beginning, right? Every right. good story starts at the beginning. So COVID hit, and when COVID hit, I was, take, I was doing my private chef thing, and then boom, nothing. Uh, everybody that cooks is fucked. And so I was like, yeah. all right. So this is, this is terrible. Well, what happens when shit gets fucking shitty? You know, you grab a glass of your favorite bourbon if you drink. I don't. I smoked a joint. And I was like, what can I do? <clears throat> so I was like, well, what cooking shows are out there? So I went through and I watched them all. There's, uh, and I've got a friends that are, uh, friends are in, in all of them, actually. Um, I looked at Bong Appetit. That was pretty cool. Yep, I looked yep. at uh, Cooked on Cannabis. I looked at, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Cooked with Cannabis and High on Cannabis. I looked at all of these things, right? Well, none of them actually tell you anything. Okay, they're like, yeah, well, this is probably 15 milligrams dose. But yeah, dose with what? Why? There's so much more to this. I mean, yeah. why are you using these terpenes? You know, uh, did you know that, you know, there's, there's so much to this plant that I was like, this is insane. And, and they're all competition shows. Yep. Now, I got nothing yep. against co competing. But if you're going to mix weed with food, part of like weed is just fucking being chill. Why yeah. you gotta compete? There's no yeah. competing, you know. I mean, it's, you're stoned in the end, anyways. So it's really, <laughs> you know what I mean. But my point is, <clears throat> I uh, I cured myself with cannabis, you know, by via self medicating and meditating and things like that. You know, yeah. I uh, used to be an alcoholic, a really bad one. Um, yeah. Comes with the fucking turf. Nothing mm -hmm. against it. And I'll buy people shots and beers all day. It just day for me, you yeah. know. Right on. Um. I don't think that'd be true if uh, if I didn't have cannabis as a crutch, you know. So that being said, I did a lot of research on it and stuff like that. And I was like, well, shit, food's the same way. Food nutrients you as well. Yeah. And as a society, we've kind of moved away from that. We've worried about, oh, I can cook a steak a lot better than you. I don't give a fuck how you cook my steak. I just want it to really taste good, okay? <laughs> yeah, I want it to be medium rare. I want it to be juicy. I want it to be, you know, as Born Dave would say, it's sex on a plate. Damn straight. We, Damn straight, we dude. We've moved away from that. We moved, you know, oh, well, I can do it, you know, molecular and gastronomy. I don't give a shit. And why the hell are you giving me a plate where I'm going to put together my own fucking toast? You Herb. know what I mean? I mean, Herb. come on. Yeah. But the point is, you know, you can heal through food. 
you can heal through cannabis. We're mixing this. Obviously, these shows exist. But there isn't a show out there, let's face it, that Bourdain would approve of. Okay? He would be like, no. Why the fuck are they competing? Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty badass. I'd like to cook it. You know, he would yeah. have opinions. Let's not deny that. But at the same time, he would be like, they're all, they're all stupid. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, but dude, dude, even <laughs> even his own shit, you know, one, one of my highlights of my life was doing the 100th show live, and, you know, again, our friend Beth, she co-hosted mm-hmm. the event with me, which was awesome, and we came back to the house, and we're hanging out, we go down to my movie room, and I toss in an old DVD from the Travel Channel of China, No Reservations. And okay. she was there, man, and I totally forgot she was there. And she's talking me through it, how much Tony hated this and Tony hated that. And it was like, yeah, because even then, even though, you know, No Reservations and Parts Unknown weren't necessarily a competition show, it was right. still this fabricated reality mm-hmm. where I think he wanted nothing more than reality itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and that's why... You know, that's why I kind of really wanted to pick up where he left off. Not to, like, you know, brag and boast, but Not we heard. don't have that. Heard. You know, nobody, we lost him, man. Yeah. We did. We, we, it was a huge, huge blow, a blow, you know, and, and it sucked, man. But no one has the audacity or the tenacity or, fuck, the chutzpah to, to be like, you know what, man? I yeah. see you. I see everything that you did. Let's continue that. What, yep. what a better homage. Yep, yep. You know, and so that's why I, I, I reached out, you know, to uh, Beth Rutsky, you know, yep. a.k.a. Grill Bitch. Yeah, and I was like, Here, here's what I'm doing. Uh, here's what I want to do. Here's what I would like to do. What mm. can we do? And she's like, all of that. Nice. nice. And so I was like, well, why the hell not? And so I started writing. And I, yeah, I will honestly tell you that Bourdain's, you know, style of writing is the way that he could, you know, uh, explain a blade of grass in 23 lines or less, but make you want to go back and reread that to make sure that you've read that kind of fuckery. You know what I yep, mean? Yep. And, uh, <laughs> You'd want to go back and reread that just to make sure yeah. you saw the same blade of grass. That, and then that. you're like, well, wait a second. Did he really just call that fucking fuck a piece of fuck? You know, how many times did he say fuck? <laughs> did I read that right? And you want to make sure that you read it because you're like, hang on a second, because that those hurled insults right there are some of the best fuckery I've seen in a while. Let's use that. Why is this not a thing? You know? Right on, man. And so uh, I really wanted to bring that kind of mentality back to, you know, the industry, back to back to the way people look at food. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For example, your average customer doesn't give a shit about what they're ordering. They don't know what it is half the fucking time. And I can tell you that because look at all the goddamn lines at the drive throughs right now. They're, they're packed. You don't want to go to work at McDonald's or Chick-fil-A because guess what? There's lines constantly. You better be able to slap some burgers together in 30 seconds or less because people want it now and they want, they want it yesterday. They don't give a shit what they're eating. They go out to eat and they have a time limit. That's what people care about the most is time. Yep. Well, it's funny because time is the number one thing we've taken out of the kitchen. It's the number one ingredient in every dish. Because every time you look up a recipe, you're going to see approximate time. How long it takes to prep it and cook it. I mean, that's time. It's in every recipe. Yep. That being said, the customer is like, that's cool, but I want a well-done T-bone steak and I want it in five minutes. You know what I mean? Yep, yep. God, you're talking about heart, And so you're like, okay, how can I... And in transcend time to make sure this person gets, you know, this burnt leather, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and it's just like, I'm going to commit adultery in this kitchen. I'm going to, you know, all these cardinal sins just to make this person enjoy this T-bone steak who doesn't give a shit less. No, isn't that called and, and using the even, fry station though? Honestly. Well, absolutely. Not a well done steak. <laughs> you know how many times I, I won't even lie to you. No, to I've, 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 I've dunked him. I've dunked him, dude. Oh yeah, do it. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. At that point, if you have the audacity to put down a well done T bone steak on my ticket, yep, I don't fucking care about you anymore. I'm gonna That's give it. you. I'm gonna give you what you asked for. Exactly. I don't care about how I give you what you asked nope. for. Nope. Have a nice day, and exactly. I hope you enjoy it. And the fact that they're gonna walk out with a smile on their face oh, yeah. speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry. Well done, steak people. Um, oh yeah. 
Yeah. The election's just, not going to go your way soon. But anyway, uh, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> terrible. But with, you get my with, point, though. with that said, um, you know, you go from this Southern cooking upbringing on through to realizing this element, which can be viewed in a certain way, can be used in a different way. You've made this beautiful journey. I have to imagine that you've identified some trends in, in food and in dining over time. Talk to me, especially now in the age of COVID, about what the next big thing looks like with regards to food. What's the next big thing? Um, we need to put our stories, excuse me, we need to put stories behind food again. Heard. Yeah. You know, it's really what yep. it is. I yep. mean, it's, it's, here's the thing. You ask any, anybody in this day age of, you know, uh, McDouble eating, uh, chicken nugget dipping, fucking Diet Coke slurping age, what are your five mother sauces? They're not going to be able to tell you without Google. They're going to know and they fucking, yeah. exactly. They're going to, you know, they're going to Google it. You fucking know that. They're like, well, I, I knew how to spell it in Google. I don't give a shit. Did you know how to cook it though? Do you know what it was? People don't know about food. They think they know, but they don't. Yep. You know, yep. what I mean by that is, oh, I've had cra- you know, uh, crab benedict all over the place. I love eggs benedict. Yeah, but what's different? You know, what's the difference? Well, one has crab in it. Right, but what is the difference? Right, right, right. And, and, that's, and, and I mean, that's, that's not to say, like, look, you don't have to know these mother sauces right. to like food. We just happen to have an odd fascination, those of us in the love affair category of food. And so, listen, just because you watched Guy Fieri or whoever else sling the latest double-layer cheeseburger with bacon yeah. and blah, 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 yeah. doesn't mean shit to us. Like, talk to me about the basics. You know, it, <clears throat> first and foremost, the basics of any kitchen, we need to bring back knees and claws, okay? Ah, I'm, yes. It's, it's, I've got a fucking tattooed for a goddamn reason. If you skis on your knees, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> probably not physically because that's you know frowned upon in many states but i'm gonna Fair. want to because here's the thing yeah. mise en place literally translates to everything in its place mm-hmm. i'm gonna explain yep. that to you everything in its motherfucking place which means if it's labeled here's where the knives go that's where the knives go if you're looking for a knife guess where they are you know there's a lot of people that i've had walk out of culinary school and don't get me wrong nothing against it okay yep and and just do the dumbest shit ever, and then they go, well, that's how they were taught in culinary school. No, you weren't. Nope. Nope. No, you weren't. You know, nope. don't fucking lie to me. No, you weren't. And so mise en place walks hand in hand with putting, you know, the stories behind our food again, and it walks hand in hand with, with appreciation of food again. Because guess what? COVID hit. Yep. No one knows how to fucking cook. No, no, Let's and we're finding it. that out Let's fast, aren't it. we? Yep. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, you don't you don't respect all these chefs in the kitchen as you do these front line workers, motherfucker. They are the front line. They workers. are the front. Yes, yes. That's what you don't understand. Yep. Not to mention, you don't understand that it's sometimes a hundred degrees plus in these fucking kitchens oh. with the hoods. I can't hear shit. I've got tinnitus from this shit. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, I don't. I don't want to sit here and, and tell everybody, oh, hey, I'm I'm an aspiring chef. Let me let me get the real deal. Okay. Really seriously think about it. I really want you to because it's gonna take it's gonna take the life from you. It's gonna take, you know, time for you to study this. You're gonna fail. But from that failure, that's how you learn. That's how I did it. Totally heard. Totally heard. And you know? on on the failure tip then, let's step away from <laughs> trends over to things that are trends that we'd like to see go away. What's what's something popular that just drives you nuts in food? Fucking brunch. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with uh with you know yeah fuck brunch. I, I it's delicious. It is. Don't get me wrong. You can cook that you know eggs Benedict pretty much any time you fucking want. It really doesn't matter. That's fair. Okay. I can see it's breakfast. Yeah. But why is there a specific special time for for brunch during the week? Not to mention. Okay. I was in Traverse City this weekend. Okay. My girlfriend and I, we decided to go out for lunch because it's lunchtime. Well, apparently it's still brunch time, somebody said. And I looked at them and I go, are you fucking kidding me? (laughs) 
I was like, take breakfast, say that. And she goes, breakfast? And I go, no, say lunch. She goes, lunch. And I go, put them together. She goes, brunch. I was like, you see what I did there? She was like, oh, well, I guess you could get lunch. I was like, are you kidding me right oh now? Oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. Really? I got a coffee. <sighs> That's That was it. But my point is, like, yeah, with yeah. brunch, there's such a stigma behind it. Okay. Do you understand how many basic white people? <laughs> let, I'm, I'm calling them out here. Basic white people would be pissed off if you just brunch died. Too many. Yep. Fucking too many. With mimosas. And, guess what? Your life isn't that fucking special. Okay? <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> fucking deal with it. All right? You're going to uh, end up dead the same way I'm going to end up dead. Why do you have to make a chef or a cook's life fucking shit for you to have a mimosa and some eggs benny with your friends? No, don't get me wrong. I appreciate your your patronage. I I will gladly take your money. But at the same, and this would be the best goddamn brunch you've ever had. But at the same time, fuck yeah. brunch. Yeah, Tyler, Karen, if you're listening, <laughs> it doesn't end well for you if you roll into Roddy's place. Sorry. Like it's, it's not going to go well, Sorry. and that's fine. You <laughs> need to you need to relax. Like you need to calm down. Brunch, breakfast, lunch, equal parts. If you want either it's, or, that's all part of it. So shut up. Just relax, please, for the love and, of God. And then there was these restaurants saying these pop-up Brinners, breakfast for dinners. And I was like, that's, okay, so Denny's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what sure. I mean? I was like, come on. Come oh, on. dude, Denny's is 2 a.m. sopping up your yeah. leaky alcohol gut there. syndrome. Yeah. We've all been there. Absolutely. There was one on, uh, I went to MSU uh, for Michigan State University, and there's one right off, you know, right off campus, and it's, it was one of the late places, and it was across the street from a liquor store, so you could run across and oh, buy you a couple shooters and some smokes. Keep going. And yeah, oh, yeah, Lord. that's all we did. That's all we did. Oh, man. Goff didn't care as long as you didn't leave Denny's. I slept in Bliss before. Went back wow. to work. You know, honestly, I've, you know, th- those who have gone to Bloomsburg University, which is, you know, we live here in Bloomsburg. My wife and I met here, and we ended up settling down here. But the Denny's was legendary because, you know, 2 in the morning, 2.30 – that's where everyone went to. That was the after. And yeah. you caught up on all the world's happenings in in that fine yellow and red logo. That's it, it guided you home. It brought you home. Except for, like, they went and redid the, the Denny's. Because, like, my girlfriend and I, like, we spent a lot of time in that Denny's, obviously. And uh, mm-hmm. we went back, and it just looks depressing, though. It's like they, it's like with the McDonald's. They took all the color out of it. No, nah, fair. I've, I've kind of noticed the same thing. Like, yeah. they took all the potential excitement away and here you are in your you know late night alcoholic fury just being bummed out now too because there's no color therapy going on you know they did that with like tricks too remember that shit like i do i you had the fruit shapes right and we're like yo these taste better because it's in the shape of fruit which isn't fucking true at all no it's not and then like you went to these like little pellets and like why am i eating rat shit like what, (laughs) what, what did you do with my and it's like then you're like, wait, did I just grow up? Was I pretending this? And then you're like, wait, they're bringing the chips back, and you're like, holy shit, stop fucking with me right now. Like, Isn't that like the crazy. whole Mandela it's effect, insane. though? The, like that Sinbad yep. movie that everyone swears they yep. saw, and no yep. one saw it? And then you're like, wait, did I really see it? Did absolutely. I really see it? Yes, did I really absolutely. see Nelson Mandela died, or, you know, whatever? Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like walking into the walk-in. You're like, cool. Why am I here? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, what did I come in here for? God damn it. Every single time. Yeah, every, single every single time. time. It doesn't time. Even, you can even, I, in, I've done this. You could write down a list of shit you need from the walk-in and leave the list and then go to the walk-in. You'll still forget. You'll yep, still forget. Done it. Done it. Totally. Totally. <laughs> so trends aside, your inspiration aside, like what's, what's going on for you? Like deliciously dope is the thing right now. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about what it looks like two, three, five years from now. What What is Rodney doing then? Um, everything. <laughs> everything. He's so to stop it. I've, uh, no, no, I've taken it all on. Uh, a couple of months ago, like I said, you know, restaurants died. They basically told me, you can't have a kitchen. Okay, well, um, what is a kitchen? Let's break this down. Basically, it's food somewhere else, you know, somewhere that you go eat or food that is prepared that has a reason or something behind it, some kind of, you know, uh, special menu or whatever have you. And let's just say you can go there and watch TV or you can watch sports games or whatever. Have you. So it's, it's a place for inter- you have entertainment and you have food. That's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Well, what if I could put that in your house? 
Well, how, well, that already happens, right? <clears throat> well, Deliciously Dope is going to come out with what's called Deliciously Dope B8, as in Delta 8 THC, which is legal in almost all the states. Deliciously Dope Date Nights, which is basically like Blue Apron or Hello Fresh, except for it's infused with weed. So the best part is, I'm going to create this show called Deliciously Dope, A Journey into the World of Culinary Cannabis. I'm going to teach you why you should eat with these specific, you know, let's say terpenes or different strains, or why you should choose CBD or a THC. I'm going to teach you how it's made, how to infuse it, why these different infusions are that you know there are there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you that professional chefs that are way more renowned than myself have been doing this and have been doing this under the radar for fucking years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, example, recent recent guest wise, I know you and I have talked. Yeah, you know, Eric Hopfinger out on the West Coast. Yep. Has been doing it for a while, and you know it's it's interesting to see it creep its way to the East Coast. And isn't that always the way, though? Like we always start on the West Coast with cool shit, and eventually it crawls over to our I don't want to say more conservative coast, but I mean, for lack of a better term, you know, eventually it does get here, and we do embrace. Oh, absolutely. It. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. So, and you're, you're absolutely right, and I'm glad you caught that because. We don't really have shit on the East Coast as far as cannabis or that kind of scene. All of these shows have been shot, you know, either in in Chicago, not sure Chicago, but like in California or something like that, all these cooking shows. Well, I want to travel. Because here's the thing, maybe you didn't know this, but Taiwan, they're making weed legal. What's that tell you? Mm -hmm. A lot of countries are going to start making marijuana legal to help fight the depression and bullshit from COVID. They're not in the boat that we're in. Yeah. But they're understanding, oh, well, shit, I bet you America is making a killing from it because they're hearing the same news we're hearing. Yep. That being said, I'm really curious because there's a lot of Taiwan, you know, Taiwanese cuisine that I'm absolutely in love with. Can't pronounce it to save my life, <laughs> but it's amazing, you yeah, know. Right on. And I've actually been invited by somebody who was on Master Chef in Taiwan. I'm not going to say any names. Okay. Um, mainly because I don't want to butcher them, but great guy. Uh, it's been one of my fans, I guess you could say, for, you know, I don't know, about a year or so. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Him and I have talked a lot. He's like, yo, you got to come try and do this infused dish. Um, cool, let's do it. He's like, but you kind of have to wait because you are American. So sorry, bud. So I've been invited, you know, to all, all these places around the world. Uh, Portugal, um, uh, Norway, London, Australia. That one's going to be fun. That's New Zealand, be awesome. yeah. India is going to be. I've been invited to Rajasthan, India. Wow. So, literally, it's like, let's go. You know what I yeah. mean? They're all yeah. talking about putting weed in food. And it's like, that's amazing, but let's go find out why. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, that's. Totally, that's, that's are they using a different type? Like, what's going on? Like, apparently I found out that there's this tribe off of this Indian, in this Indonesian island that have been putting it in like this, it's like a pork broth, mm-hmm. but they don't cook with the flour. Obviously, you smoke the flour. They right. cook with the, the leaves, like the fan leaves. Right on. So I was like, that's gnarly as hell. And he, like, he sent me some pictures. I was like, yeah, so I'm going to try and recreate that. Mine didn't look as pretty, but... Holy hell! Was the it was it was amazing. It had like sense of lavender in it, it was like like kind of a calming effect. You know what I mean? And I was like, that's really gnarly. Nice, man. If you take that and you look at the terpenes that are used, yeah. you can find out which one it is and why, and then you can add that to your diet and heal yourself. Heal yourself, man. That's so awesome. So I mean, not only just. From a media perspective, or from a self care perspective, I mean, you're taking off, man. And so, you know, looking at deliciously dope yeah. on YouTube, correct, and Instagram yep. as well. Yep. I yeah, mean, yep. Um, we're gonna be doing some stuff here soon. I've got a couple of networks that are interested um, because right it is it's, it's pretty good. No, I'm being honest with you. I've, I've talked to some people involved with some networks, uh, pretty well known names. Not dropping those yet. You got to stay tuned for that shit. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Yep. Um, but it, it definitely is. It's me getting kind of uh, it's, it's shitty to say this, but vindication. You know, sure. I've always been no, told. No, totally. you know, I've always been you know been told, hey, you can't do this, or hey, you can't have a restaurant, or oh no, 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 you're just not good enough. You know, dude. You tell me no. I've heard it fifteen different ways from forty-five different people. Oh. It wasn't. It wasn't fun. My mom and I, 
you know, God rest her soul, if you will, but uh, she did not fucking like me. We agreed on two things. That was coffee and Elvis, and that was pretty much it. Um, that was it. I mean, and it, and it was funny because, like, she's like, really? That asshole's the one that's going to be my, you know, culinary, you know, uh, fucking, uh, I don't know, I, star child or some shit. But like I was just like, damn it. Like, for, yeah. yeah. She was not happy about that. She was just like, God damn it. You know what I mean? <laughs> she's just like, take me now. Uh, my life is fucked. But no, she, she, he, she taught me a lot. She just was not very good at it. And um, it sucked, man. You know, I was, I, I got to the point to where like people just, because they don't know you. Or like, you know, give you a chance. Like they don't really think that you can do it. And then they kind of give up on you. They swerve on you. And then boom, here you come out with this, 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 this blog. And you're like, oh, dude, no, like I've been gassing you for a while. You really haven't though. You told me I couldn't do it. Now that I'm doing it, now you want me? Now, now all of a sudden you're going to show up with your arms outstretched, acting like you were holding them out the whole time. Exactly. Case, case in point, um, I've got people hitting me up thinking that I've blown up. No, dude, I've got, you know, a bunch of awesome fans and followers. Shout out to all y'all, man. Like, and people that are still learning my name. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I do it for them. I do it because they, I I want everything that I was told that I couldn't have. Heard, man. Heard, man. That's exactly why I was having this conversation the other day. Someone asked (laughs) me, why do you do the show? Why Why do you do that? Five plus years, 100 plus episodes. Why do you do it? I said, because I had a speech impediment and I was told I couldn't do that. Yep. You know, I was told I should just, like, stay quiet. I was told that cooking was for girls. I was told that cooking mm-hmm. was uncool. And middle fingers extended to all facets of that. So it sounds like you and I oh, are yeah. kind of, you know, on that same cloth in that, you know, when you tell me I can't, I'll show you not only I can, but how hard I can. You know, it's, they always say uh, haters are going to hate until you're hiring. Yeah, yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? And so now I'm going to drop a little something on you and I, since you've been asking about it. And uh, now I know we're of the same grease stained cloth, if you will. Fair. Yeah. Um, there is a local restaurant. Uh, I can announce the name here later on. But this, this Wednesday, we are going to sit down and we're going to think about the future of this restaurant. And I'm going to be telling you that Deliciously Dope is going to be doing infused dinners being filmed there. Beautiful. On location. Beautiful. That's local to me, which means this starts a lot faster. Not to mention I get to play with food and put weed in it. It makes somebody feel good about their life. Exactly. All of that sounds amazing to me. And that's why I do what I do. That's exactly it, man. That's exactly it. And that's, I mean, such a, such a cool story from, from, you know, getting past the bottle into cannabis and really having that heal you. And having it really come to be your muse, for lack of a better term, it really seems that, you know, dear sweet Mary Jane, you know, yeah. has become that, that muse, yeah. and that's so cool. Um, so, you know, again, I, I don't think this is the last time you and I will talk on oh, air. No, I think uh, we, have, we have a lot of work to do here, but what we do have to do is the after section. Um, knowing what direction you're heading in is one thing, but knowing what kind of music you listen to when you cook is a whole other thing. So let me transition awkwardly into that and ask you, I'm standing in your kitchen. You can pick professionally or at home. What music am I listening to while we cook? I've always been a fan, and you're going to laugh about this, but I've always been a ska fan. Okay, first stop for a minute. I'm not <laughs> going I'm not going to laugh because I was a ska trombonist in okay, yeah. not one but two bands yeah. in college, and I will text you... A couple of pictures of me in my gear, in my oh, regalia, yeah. and if I, I can played, send yep. you the file of our uh, sample track we did for Moonska back in '99, <laughs> I will I will do so. But I've turned my middle oh, yeah. kid into a ska fan as well. So stop it! Ooh. You are among friends here. <laughs> um, yeah. Favorite ska band and go. Um. So I really like the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Dickie Barrett. But I, I, yeah, I really like Real Big Fish. Uh, how can you not? The live album right. is better than, yep. like, your studio being album. Being at the show is better than anything that recorded. I'm being honest with you. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's funny because a lot of my friends are like, oh, Scott sucks, Scott's terrible. Then the beer song comes on from Real Big Fish. Dude, beer is amazing. amazing. 
I'm like, okay, well, that's ska. They're like, no, it's not. It's not real ska. I'm like, okay, you don't like ska. You hate it. You like one song, and you say that that's not real ska. I'm going to really take a saxophone and shove it up your ass. Ask that's them what real ska it. is, and if they don't say mid-70s, then yeah. they have no idea what it's about. Because yeah. technically, ska really took – ska took off late 60s, to be fair. I was a trombonist. Yes. I had long hair. I wore pigtails. I did the whole George Clinton Parliament Funkadelic thing where I had – Suspenders, no shirt, and a jacket, and I would, you know, take a good rip of a water pipe, mom, pause for effect, and then I would blow it out as I played my trombone, and so, like, people would see creamy white smoke coming out the bell of my trombone while I played gigs. Like, they lost their minds doing it, and ska was just such an upbeat thing. Like, you can't be in a bad mood and listen to ska. No. That's the thing. Like, it's it's... Always, <clears throat> you got Goldfinger Superman. That was on, they made it. It's, it was a huge song. We loved it. You know, just like that. Here I am. You know, yeah, when you hear yeah. it in, in the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, you're like, oh, that's from Tony Hawk. No, it's not. And no, it's not. Stop. No, it's not. It's from many years before that. But when oh, they exactly. did it during COVID, it was a better version of it than ever heard before. Did you see it? This is true. Oh, dude, it's phenomenal. Dude, it was incredible. It made me feel so good being alone. aging. Like, I was like, oh, wait did. a minute. I'm in that pocket. I, like, I got this. You're like, wait a minute. Did, I didn't, they did not look. Okay, so for being as old as they are, let, let's, let's, you know. Yeah, yeah, let's be honest. Call in the kettle, if you will. They're not young. They looked good. They looked good. Yeah. They did. You know, they didn't look, because you think, you know, all these years of touring and, you know, all it's going to take a toll on you. It does. Mm-hmm. I know that because my career takes a toll on me. Yep. I'm a musician as well. You know, I grew up being a drummer. Go figure. You know what I mean? Well, you hung and out with I, the musicians then. You weren't really a musician. You hung out with the musicians, right? I mean, you know, drummers <laughs> pretend. Okay? Drummers <laughs> pretend. We just, you just bang on shit and make a sound. Exactly. Uh, that's exactly. pretty much it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. I went from that to being a, a singer in a metal band. Nice. And so just, I used to sing to people and they liked it. And I was like, that's kind of cool. Yep. No musical, like, it, it doesn't take much. But really, honestly, yeah, Ska. Anything Ska is cool. Like, I, I really like, I like everything, to be honest with you. I really do. Like, I, I've got to be honest, you know, I yeah. love Eminem. I really do. Yeah. He's had some shitty albums, yeah, but he is the GOAT, and I don't care what you say. He's an anchor, man. He's an anchor. Exactly. But I mean, you know, musically, we're, you know, looking older all the time, but feeling younger mm-hmm. in our mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and look at how many generations he spans on. Yeah. You can't no, hate true. on anybody. That's it. And I'm from Michigan, dude. Like, literally, I drive an hour and I'm in Detroit. Yeah. That's just it. You know, you can't not like Eminem and be from it. It's just, it's a cardinal sin. It you ever is. drive eight mile just to feel thug? You feel tough or? Okay, listen, I have, <laughs> I will one up, I will white boy one up you. I have driven. <laughs> I had a car in high school, okay, yeah, and this yeah. is around the time that you know, you know, uh, Eight Mile came out, you know, yeah. and they said you hear the dun 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 in the beginning, and you're like, oh shit, you crank it up because you know every fucking word, and you're gonna pretend to be hard at hard as fuck and go, you know, rap through it. I was in Detroit, and the song came on the radio, okay. I had fake gas Walmart spinners on my. This is hilarious. Oh, don't do that. Don't do this. And then, and in 1991, Cadillac, uh, like, it was the, the flare one. It was like, uh, what was it? Cadillac something. Fleetwood. Okay. Not Fleetwood. What the fuck was it? Fleetwood? No, it was a Cadillac. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It was a big ass Cadillac. And so it was, it looked like, I want to say like duct tape fabulous. It was not in mint condition, but it looked good for how old it was. I slapped spinners on that. Okay, I'm driving down eight mile in Detroit. This comes on the radio, and I start blasting it. There you go. <laughs> you know, and so like, <laughs> I start blasting it, and as soon as I get to like a red light, I'm the only white person at this red light, oh, no. and that oh, is no. blaring. Oh no! So what do you do? Do you? And do you embarrassly, you know, embarrass yourself and turn it down? But like, yo, my no. bad, sorry. You gotta lean into it. No, you can't. it's all right because because I know this and he's white, so it's fine. And then you know, you're like, well, really, there's nothing wrong with this. Here's no. the funny part. 
they're not laughing at the song. They're not laughing in, in you and your hoopty, hoop to Ville, if you will. <laughs> they're not laughing at you. They're laughing at you because you're emba- like you just embarrass yourself. You acted a fool, and that's what you got. Yep. And everybody gets it, but you. You're like fuck, fuck, meat mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's how you make your palms sweaty, real talk. Yep. So I didn't do that again. <laughs> I didn't no, do that no. again at all. No, I didn't just. Not gonna happen. And, so, uh, so I mean, safe to say, s- safe to say, you lost yourself in the music. The moment <laughs> you wanted, I lost it. something. I don't uh, know, my man card, possibly. <laughs> 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 nice, yeah, but no, nice. Safe, we'll, safe to say, we'll stick with ska on that one for sure. Um, next question: Deserted island style. You're gonna be stranded. You can take three foods or food type items with you, inexhaustible supplies. They just <clears throat> magically renew, but you can only have three things that you bring with you to this deserted island. What would they be and why? Duck. Love like, it. Like, uh, just ducks. Just put ducks on the island. Okay. Um, oranges or lemons, some kind of citrus. Hell, grapefruit. That's fine. Um, and I need cloves. Nice. I can break down the entire duck and do duck all orange if I want. Yeah. I can yeah. make duck coffee. I can literally use and u- utilize almost everything from that duck. Okay? Yeah. I can, with citrus fruit, yeah. I can acidically add an acid to everything. It can flavor shit. I can eat it, you know, for vitamin C if I need to be. Yep. And with the nope. cloves, let's face it, you're in a stranded island, there's nothing coming around, you buy it on the shell or something, you chip your tooth. The cloves are going to help you heal inside of your mouth, not to mention it's a key ingredient. That is acid into duck all orange. So, duck all orange being, you know, a classic friend staple, you're now able to make that. I think that you're going to have a pretty good living on this desert island. So freaking cerebral. Killer. Killer! (laughs) I love that. I love that. Um, Melanie Denea, My Last Supper. Have you read it? Have you seen it? I have, okay, so I've been turned on to it by your podcast and oh, no, both, okay, cool. you know, you guys on the show and, and about the Rutsky has told me, no, go pick that up. You need to read it. It's yeah. definitely a good book. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, it's super strong. Um, 50 famous chefs, 50 interviews, same questions asked of each. And it really boils down to the late night chef drinking, smoking, whatever game, you know, your ticket's getting punched tomorrow. You got one last meal. What would it be? And why? So I ask you, Rodney, what would your last meal be? Oh man! So it's tough. I, I know. I got to think about this, man. I went from cerebral to just I joked, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we, we listen to Eight Mile. That's why. <laughs> so I guess it would have to be. Oh, here it goes too. Here it goes too. Come on, man, feel it. Ah. Uh, I'd say I'd probably start with a joint. I'd have to smoke it before I eat my food. It's it's really become a habit to me. It helps me really enhance the flavors of what I might have. And honestly, to tell you the truth, you can't go wrong with a nice fucking medium rare, you know, T-bone steak. Honestly. Nice. Like, I want that shit still got blood in it. Nice. Uh, a baked potato or some kind of mashed potatoes. And that motherfucker better know what he's doing because I'm part Irish, so if you fuck up potatoes, <laughs> I'm going to be killed twice, okay? That's just what I'm going to say. Nice. Um, some people have done it. So some garlic coffee, basically, you know, roasted garlic coffee, uh, mashed potatoes would be great with it. And uh, you got to have a bread. But mm-hmm. I don't know, mm-hmm. a good bread pudding would work because you got to have a dessert before, you know, yeah. before you yeah. attempt to, to get loose at the noose, if you will. You yeah, know? you can't skip uh, on that. No. No, so I I probably do that, but I think that most essentially I'd be like, let me smoke a joint first. Let me go out, you know, half happy at least. You know what I'm saying? Totally. But yeah, smoke a joint, keep on steak, you know, whatever fixings. Whatever I'd, comes along for the ride. I'd die right? decently. Yeah, I'd, I'd die decently. Yeah. That's a decent death. That's a decent yeah. death. Um, finally, last question: the simplest and yet the most complex. What is food to you, sir? In a single word. Hmm. Culture. Col- Ooh. Oh. I Culture. haven't heard that before. Explain just a little bit, if you would. So, you remember back in the day when your family would come together, no matter what it was, you always had 
you know, some kind of drama, whether it was handing out some drama here or it was, it was, you know, handling this kind of death or this birthday, you have these stories sitting around the table. Well, you even come around the table when you have a you know, guest over and you sit around the table. What, what's served at the table? Food. So your dining room table is much like a bar at a bar. You go there, you know instinctively through whatever Pavlonian technique that you learned yourself or learned behavior that I'm being served alcohol at this bar. If I come to this bar, this is where the alcohol is. <clears throat> that is a culture. Okay. Right. You learn this culture growing up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It all revolves around food. Food oh, tells it, a story. Food tells a story that that a lot of people have have lost sight of. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's it's quite essential to to what we are as people. And honestly, if we can't understand and respect that food is a culture itself that transcends into all these small subcultures, yeah, then we really aren't. There's so much culture in food. Oh, totally. Dude, Latin cuisine. Are you totally. kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is it's what brings them around the table. If you look at African cuisine, it brings them around the table where they all share food together, like absolutely. hands in dishes together, Ethiopian like, style, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, man. I mean, look at at the same time. Check this out. You're ready to blow your mind a little bit. Absolutely. So Ethiopians would do the exact same thing: hands in, you know, to the rice. They've got to eat leaves. Take that and throw it into Spain. Okay, you ever had a nice seafood paella? Absolutely. Using the actual clam shells or whatever, you know, ooh, clam or whatever ooh. shellfish as a spoon. There it is. There it is. That, that's it. That's a culture. Take yeah. the food away from it. Same culture. So you're doing the exact same thing. The same with cannabis, and that's the brilliant part of it, man. You know what I'm saying? So if yep. you set down a joint in front of somebody or, some, you know, kind of whatever, if you set down weed and you set down food, it doesn't matter what fucking language you speak or how stupid or smart you are. You're going to know, A, I smoked that and that's going to taste better, or I know I can smoke that and I know I can eat that. It's basic. That's, right it's on, basic. dude. I am so glad that as, as happens so many times in the culinary field, our paths have crossed thanks to a mutual friend. Um... Just such a beautiful insight, such a beautiful perspective on things. Um, deliciously Dope TV. Um, again, look that up on the YouTube, the Insta, Facebook presence, or is Facebook presence still just you, Roddy? Oh, no, absolutely. No, Facebook, uh, you'll find us at Deliciously Dope TV. Uh, the website, I just changed it. It's um, delici- It's like, it's thedeliciouslydope.com. Nice. That'll link you to everything else. Beautiful, beautiful. So, deliciouslydope.com. Be sure to check it out. Ronnie Linehart, Insta, Facebook, that kind of thing. That's how I came yes. to know him. So, you know, again, reach out. You have questions you want to know. But, again, man, Rodney. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate the time. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, just the me, enthusiasm, man. brother. It's it's so refreshing to hear somebody be that energized about the, quote unquote the life that so many of you lead. And uh, you know, I I can only imagine great things. Beth Beth doesn't gravitate to uh, to those who aren't amazing. So oh, no. you know, <laughs> by that alone, I know you're some solid stock. So I'm excited to watch you uh, do what you do, Thank buddy. You. Thank you. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, and that's why, that's what it is, man. You know, it's, <clears throat> you live one day at a time. You, your aim is to do everything that you would regret in the end. Absolutely. No, for sure, man. For sure. So, man, Rodney, thank you so much again. Episode number 140 of the Course Garden Podcast with me again this evening has been the Chef Rodney Leinhart of Deliciously Dope TV. Be sure to check out all their stuff on the Insta and the YouTube. Our producer, as always, this evening has been the lovely, voluptuous Johnny Leland Robinson, a.k.a. the Reverend Johnny Lamoria. Be sure to check out all his libertarian happenings and his Cinematic Pig's Feet podcast uh, on the Tube of View. And next episode will be number 141. Stay tuned.
Are you passing through central Pennsylvania and looking for one of the best dining experiences and craft brew menus around? Look no further. Turkey Hill Brewing Company and 991 Central Road in Bloomsburg, PA has everything you could ask for and then some. Service, food, beer, together, unbelievable. Be sure to check them out. Call them today for reservations, 570-387-8422. Call today.